Today we're going to learn about deep robust one class classification. All right, let's start. So uh, this paper was basically released um, to focus on two types of problems. One was anomaly detection. Uh, so the paper focuses on unsupervised anomaly detection and a related problem, which is one class classification under limited negatives. So where uh, limited negative, we refer to the normal data and positive is an outlier. So basically uh, limited negatives mean that we have limited normal data, normal data, which is not anomalous. All right. So whenever we have limited normal data and we have, uh, we, will, we have to basically classify between normal and anomalous that is a uh, positive class. So negative is normal data. Positive class basically means uh, outliers. So the, the main two problems that this uh, paper solved is uh, unsupervised anomaly detection and one class classification of uh, limited negatives. So one class classification and anomaly detection basically means the same thing that is identifying one single class that is a different class data points which are different from the rest of the class. All right. So for both the problems, the paper proposes a solution based on low dimensional manifold assumption to generate informative adversarial anomalies. The method is called DROC and it uses Euclidean distance to compare points locally. What does these lines mean? Low dimensional manifold assumptions and generative informative adversarial anomalies. We will get to know uh, later in the presentation. Uh, so DDoC doesn't require any do domain specific transformations. For example, if we have, if you might, guys might have used a random forest, isolation forest or one class SVM, we use, we do a lot of feature engineering in the data sets to use uh, those classical methods. Right, so no such domain transformations are required in this method. It is ro robust to model collapse. What is model collapse? We'll also discover this later. And it is state of the art on tabular images and time series data. So it's really um, interesting and impressive that one single technique or uh, um, technology can be used on different kind of data sets. Right. Moving on, one class classification problems. Uh, it for the first problem in this setting is uh, that of anomaly detection, which I've already told you, uh, which is widely studied. The goal here is to identify the outliers. That is the points which do not belong to the typical data distribution, finding the anomalies, uh, finding its application. The application of this model varies from uh, ranges from IOT till illegal traffic flow detection. Then there is another problem that is of, uh, one class classification and the limited negatives. Uh, in the training data, there are very few negatives. Our goal is to learn a classifier, which is which does not misfire even for the inputs, which are very close to the wake word. So for example, if we have uh, a cell setting like Alexa, and if the model should not activate, even if when we say Alexa, Alex, or similar words, even when we see or speak similar words, it should not get activated, right? All right. So coming to the prior work on anomaly detection, we have some classical methods which try to model the typical data distribution with some simple function like constructing a minimum and closing wall in terms of the simple classical methods. But on complex domains like image and time series, it does not work well where featureization is not a trivial task. So in this methods, we have to kind of do a lot of feature in engineering and featureization, but this method doesn't work well for time series and images because uh, feature engineering not trivial there. In deep learning methods, we have approaches like deep SVDD, which extends uh, the classical data modeling functions and apply them to all features by deep net such approaches are susceptible to the issue of model collapse. So what is model collapse? Um, so in, in, um, in GANs or in variable autoencoders, what we do is we try to, um, so what do machine learning models do? They basically try to assume the distribution of the data, right? How the, how the data is distributed in space. Similarly, what GANs do is they 
they kind of uh, assume the distribution of data in the, in the space, right? What model collapse is that when the model is outputting uh, the same output or a very small subset of the entire range of outputs, basically it's not producing different results to the different input that we are giving the model. That is known as model collapse. And it is a very famous term in when somebody is uh, studying about GANs or variable autoencoders, right? So that was a little bit about model collapse. Also, if we use um, such advanced techniques like autoencoders, so uh, autoencoders are basically used for more difficult problems than anomaly detection, right? And then there are, there are domain-specific methods. So in domain-specific approach, people try to learn the underlying geometric structure of the normal data. What is done here is uh, the model tries to predict the transformation which has been applied. If it fails to predict the transformation, we say it is an anomaly, right? So uh, what, what the model does is it basically predicts what kind of transformation is there. So in any image, there can be hundreds of different kinds of angles I image can go through, right? And if the model fails to predict, we consider, the model consider this, that as an anomaly. And that is like really, really uh, weird, weird in a way, because they can be different images of different intensities, images of different angles and different um, inclination or a transformation. And there could be million possible possibilities of the same image, right? And definitely in one or the other way, the model would fail to predict that class. And that's why the disadvantages of this particular approach is that it fails whenever it sees a different kind of image with different angle. All right. So the approach of this paper is basically to not to use any handcrafted features, no domain specific transformation, and the model should be robust to model collapse. It should have a very strong generalization and it should it should be applied to tabular time series images and it should have a very low FPI. So these are all the, um, the, the target that it is trying to achieve here, right? So coming to the approach of uh, this technique that is really deep robust one class classification, it, it is based on an assumption and the assumption is that a set of typical normal points lie on a low dimensional locally linear manifold that is well sampled. So in any data set, so first of all, what is a manifold? So in, in, in data science and machine learning, we always talk about hyperdimensions, dimensions that are more than three. Humans can only visualize till three dimensions easily. And beyond that, it is very, very difficult, right? And we, we, are, we are always dealing with multiple hyperdimensions in machine learning, right? So in a way, a manifold is just uh, transforming our hyperdimension data into a lower dimension space, right? If we can transform in any particular way of, of a six dimension space into a two or three dimension space, just like we do in PCA, but not exactly like PCA, that, that is principal component analysis, how we reduce the dimensions. Uh, th that is, manifolding is somewhat related to uh, reducing the dimensions, but not exactly. Uh, we, I can give it literally an entire presentation on, on just manifolding, how, how uh, interesting that specific technology is and uh, how it affects um, different deep learning architectures. So if we can re reduce that our data distribution into a lower linear manifold and, and the data in that manifold is well sampled, then that case is applied. So we have an assumption here that a set of typical normal points lies on a low dimensional, locally linear manifold that is well sampled. So that is the assumption of this approach and it works well on most of the times. So what happens is uh, any point that is normally like perpendicularly away from the point. So let's say this green value is, just, is the normal point and these red points which are uh, away from the normal point are known as anomalies. All right, so point away from the normal data on the manifold are anomalies. Then we consider Euclid distance, that is uh, just a normal square, square root of the distance to compare points over the manifold. So this is a linear manifold where we have normal points here. One second. We have linear points here, right? 
and we have a lot of points around these also but this these are the normal points and around these we have anomalies so we'll use euclid distance to compare points over the manifold and we'll have adversarial generate anomalies around every training normal sample so what we'll do is um one second so coming to this part again the approach here is to basically uh, classify all these points as anomalies which are around the normal data point how we do it this is the mathematical uh, approach of how we do it so this is basically the normal loss function which we use in, in any machine learning problem uh, we minimize the loss around the normal data and then this is basically uh, uh, we are, this is a basically a min max problem wherein we are kind of maximizing the loss this is a gradient ascent problem so we are kind of using this method that is gradient ascent to add more number of anomalies to our uh, already existing training data set so find point away from the manifold still classified as normal this function here helps us to uh, the first time the first thing here is basically minimizing the loss over the normal training data and this is a min max problem where we try to find out a point x which is more than a threshold distance away from the manifold but still is classified as normal all right so so it is a high dimensional data set there can be large number of such data points near our manifold so what we do is we use standard graded ascent um similar to adversarial training to find the most optimal point x which is misclassified as normal and add that optimal point back to our training data set right so this is what happens so uh, we have the blue points here have been misclassified as positive that means as as normal data points right and we this blue dash line is the normal data set here so what we do is we try to find these blue points which are i r distance away from our low dimension manifold and are misclassified and into normal points we add them add the misclassified point into our normal training data set and then train the classifier again and iteratively we do that so that in the first iteration um, like the the hope is that there will be a lot of these blue points which will be r distance away but we keep adding these onto our training data set and then train again after enough iterations it classifies all the points which are r distance away as anomalies by this definition only we can say that the ddog is robust to model collapse because it because over iterations it can completely and properly classify all the points into anomalies right so Uh, we tested then this approach was validated on tabular time series and data set images one second this um risk of, of overfitting um so let me come to that part later um so this approach was validated on tabular data sets time series and uh, image standard one one versus all uh, settings was used for multi class data sets and f1 score or auc as a metric right so in the tabular data sets uh, ddog was evaluated on three most common data sets abulene arrhythmia and thyroid in literature in all these it outperformed the baseline by 60 to 12% uh, on the standard benchmarks in time series uh, we evaluated drop uh, ddog against apolytic caesar data set and the google keyword and observe gains as i has 2 to 4% against the baseline standard benchmarks in the image data uh, we evaluated ddog on the cfar data set we compared results with respect to models like kna one class svm deep svdd isolation forest and ddog outperforms baseline with as high as 20% on each of the classes like on most of the classes right but interestingly on two classes kn and achieves the matching performance as it on this and on the on this one i guess yep all right so it, it was performing pretty well so the summary of these is basically uh, on weak and in general well accepted assumption the assumption was that we were assuming a well sampled low linear manifold 
right? It applies to generally all the domains, does not require side information or any feature engineering. It is robust to model collapse. It is state-of-the-art performance on a variety of data sets. All right, so coming to the questions. Um, yeah, so as though I guess um, Salman is in writing saying that um, overfitting in a way, it kind of adds more. So the the gradient ascent part, what it, what it does is it artificially creates those points. E even if they are not there, the gradient descent part creates those points, which uh, using which it re removes or reduces this possibility of overfitting. 